on the bus. Am I favorite record this? <laughs> this is history in the making. <laughs> also, Kathy, who's a mover and shaker with Clean Water Action, um, she helped get a lot of people on the bus at Easton. I'm going to take it out because it's going to apply for this family. So if you have a bait or you to say something in the future, I think it's... It says uh, clean water now and for the future. Woohoo! You're not going to write anything? I didn't have a pen. So it just kind of sticks <laughs> out. Up here we are going to a public hearing that it will be defending the people's right to clean water. schedules and navigating the highways. All right, let me just say we're talking about two to three years of gas here uh, <laughs> to participate uh, in this public hearing process. A map here that shows the acreage that is already currently under lease. It's a vast majority of land. These are private property owners under lease only with Hassan Newfield. Um, we're going to be taking oral comment this afternoon on a couple of draft dockets. I could have made a quarter of a million dollars by signing a lease, but um, for me, water was more important than gas. Uh, that relate to water withdrawals and uh, natural gas well pad uh, site location. I fish for catfish. I fish for trout in the upper Delaware. I beg you and plead you to put a moratorium on this until all the studies are done. Uh, what I'd like to do is uh, talk a little bit about the conduct of the hearing uh, before we get involved. As a matter of fact, you can build a gas well in Pennsylvania and in New York, in the Delaware River watershed, in the 100-year floodplain. It's outrageous. It's unthinkable that you would actually be able to put a gas well and its infrastructure in the floodplain of the river. But you can, and the waterways as well. OK. Um, we wanted to uh, allow for everybody to be heard, and we wanted to do that in an even-handed kind of way. The Robeson Well is contaminated. You all decided not to regulate it, and it's contaminated. And you are now considering additional permits. I will say to you, I will say to you that you will have the wrath of the people to deal with if you consider <laughs> moving forward. So, let's use some logic. This one industry is exempt from every single federal environmental law uh, of any significance. Um, the next one gives you a little bit more of a USGS of where the uh, water withdrawal is. That off the fact should get the commissioners sort of uh, interested in what it is uh, their mandate will now be. Specifically in this docket, the drilling is already underway. The, uh, the water withdrawal docket essentially uh, limits the water to be used for natural gas development and extraction activities at uh, any stone well pad site. 255 million gallons per year. In the floodplain of the river, but you can't handle waterways as well. You would think, well, who would do this? Well, I'll tell you right now, Stone Energy did it. And Stone Energy did it in violation of Pennsylvania regulations, was found in violation of Pennsylvania regulations just last month. A picture right here I'm submitting of the flooded site of Stone Energy 
on it free in Susquehanna County. So they're doing it, and others are going to want to do it too, unless we put regulations in place that prohibit it. Good planning normally leads to good outcomes, and poor planning leads to very bad outcomes. Generally, the entire industry has, through lobbying, ex become exempt from the federal clean air and clean water concerns. Natural gas is probably the scariest thing that I've encountered in my 28 years of life so far. And I'm also concerned because of the lack of regulations that are appropriate for air and water quality here in Pennsylvania that are presented by the particular challenges of hydraulic fracking. A lot of people have responded to me saying, oh, well, my water treatment plant will take care of that. And we know that's not true. It has to be any wastewater needs to be cleaned up at the drilling site. If we frack, we have an abundance of wastewater. If we don't frack, then there's less wastewater, and which means that we have less treatment facilities, which use energy anyway, a lot of it. I hate to think about how uh, downstream the uh, presence of bromide, possibly in gas drinking water, can, can turn into something else. I'm pretty pissed off. dealing with here is a classic example of this tragedy of the commons. We privatize our profits and we commonize the costs. I have heard that it will Ooh. cost the taxpayers of Pennsylvania upwards of three billion dollars a year for the commonized costs of this project for fracking for natural gas. That based on the evidence that's available about gas drilling and based on the testimonies here, it is absolutely absurd that we're even gathered here to tell you about this. You don't know what you got till it's gone. And we have a responsibility to protect it for the generations to come. Thank you. Thank you. First I was afraid of petroleum. Kept thinking we could never get off foreign oil again. But I spent so many nights reading up on natural gas, how it's wrong. I learned we must carry on, don't hydro frack. I'll be this place. Can't drill the river of the year without a plan or what waste. We should have fixed up all those laws when Dick and Bush gave you the key. If I had known for just a second, you would have been seen in my teeth. I'll walk down the road. Woo! Walk out the door. Until it's safe now. Cause we don't want to walk more. Weren't you the one who polluted Texan skies, let my land crumble? And let my food and water die, or no, not I. attention to your water otherwise I won't I won't have any water either <laughs>